Hello Magic Community, T1 Listener Elf. Here's a story, I've told some of the story before, but now let me give you the whole story. This is really important that I tell you all now before the channel gets any older. So, I got started playing Magic the Gathering back in high school. I was actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh! before then, and Pokemon as well. But Yu-Gi-Oh! was my big game. We had a group that would meet at the cafeteria table, and we'd just play Yu-Gi-Oh! for a while. Well, one day, one of us, Kyle, decided to bring some Magic the Gathering cards. And he brought enough that we could, two at a time, play that as well. And we liked it. This was back when Lorwyn was around, so I had to borrow cards in order to play. Come time for Shards of Alara, though, I ended up actually buying my own cards. Now, none of us understood the first thing about formats. We didn't know that there were formats, so while everyone else is basically going to the store and buying booster packs and making their decks out of that, I'm going online to Troll and Toad. <laughs> Some other websites too, perhaps, but Troll and Toad I remember for sure. And buying cards that made my deck legacy, essentially. It was a mono black aggro, but also ramp deck. It had turn one Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre, power plays. It ran Cabal Coffers and one Urborg, I believe. Yeah, Urborg, yeah, that was, that was the thing. Okay, so this, this deck is dumb. <laughs> this is a competitive casual deck, let's say. And I thought that I was really good at the game, not realizing that I had an advantage over everybody else that was there. I thought that I was hot. Okay, another guy comes in. He borrows his dad's cards and has a mono blue... There were at least two Ancestral Recalls in the deck, so this wasn't even a vintage legal deck. No, this was a while ago. Ancestral wasn't worth as much. But still, he's bringing Ancestral Recalls to a cafeteria. No, no one, as far as I'm aware, had any idea how much those things were worth. Thank goodness for him. Uh, but it was a Scalpelexus Mill deck. Now, I had a lot of swamps in my deck to turn on Cabal Coffers. Scalpelexus has this handy little ability where Mill 4, if any of them have names that match, do it again. Ugh, I hated that deck, and I lost my first time. So I went home and I sulked. <laughs> it may be a little hard, but I, I, it, it dwelled in my mind. So I went, and since we were Yu-Gi-Oh players too, I challenged him to a Shadow Realm duel. And this time, I, I beat him. And I was playing Mono Black, so I'm playing like... I think I had maybe, I don't think I had thought saves, but I had hand attack effects uh, in, the, in the deck to strip him of the uh, cards in his hand, and he's just not getting to play. He's doing this, and he's getting super on tilt. Well, when I actually swing for lethal with Hypnotic Spectre or whatever I had, <laughs> he takes the table and he flips the table up, and all of our cards go everywhere. And this is an American high school, so the principal is, or vice principal is there, and he, he calls over because he thinks there's about to be a fight. And you know what? There was about to be a fight. So I'm, I'm running back. When I get back home, um, my mom says, you're moving with your aunt and your uncle in Bel Air. And uh, that's where I am now. So that's the story of how I got into Magic the Gathering. So that's it. Take care, Magic community. I will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, God. Why did I do that?